Welcome to the Mini Traps demonstration video. My name is Ethan Weiner, and I'll be your host along with my longtime friend and Real Traps partner, Doug Ferrara. We're gathered here in the control room of Doug's home studio, where Doug has removed all of his acoustic treatment, even the carpet. This was done to maximize the room effects for the demonstration that follows. Our purpose today is to show just how important acoustic treatment, especially bass traps, is for most small rooms. A lot of people have no idea how terrible the low frequency response in the room really is. So we'll measure the frequency response of this room before and after installing eight mini traps. Along the way, you'll see also how mini traps are installed and learn where to place them and why. Earlier, we assembled a sonar project containing 260 one-second wave files. These play every frequency between 40 and 300 hertz in one hertz increments. This is needed because standard third octave pink noise testing is far too coarse to show the true room response. After we install the mini traps, we'll play these tones with a mic at the mixing position and record them into sonar. Okay. All right, we're getting ready to, to measure the frequency response of this room without any treatment, without any bass traps, and we're using uh, this Electrovoice omnidirectional mic. It's important to use an omnidirectional microphone for doing room testing. Uh, usually for high frequencies, we probably want a high quality condenser mic, and we have that. Uh, but for these purposes, this uh, inexpensive Electrovoice omnidirectional mic is fine. We're only going up to 300 hertz. And uh, omnidirectional is needed because uh, uh, cardioid mics, directional mics, always have a proximity effect. And the bass response changes depending on how near or far it is from the source. So for room testing, you definitely want an omnidirectional mic. We've put this at about the mixed position. This is right about where your ears are when seated in front of the, uh, in front of the uh, speakers. And we're going to play this. This is a sonar project. Uh, it runs for 260 seconds there, uh, and plays uh, every frequency in 1 hertz increments from 40 hertz to 300. And we're going to just run it, and uh, it's playing the frequencies, and it's going to record right back in. And then by seeing how the frequencies are louder and softer, uh, we can very easily see exactly what the frequency response is. So we're going to start this playing. It's going to run, like I say, for a little bit. It's the uh, R button here to record. Record. A control room like this, Doug, is uh, is pretty typical for a lot of people with basement studios. It's a you know a six and a half, seven foot ceiling, right. but it's actually closer to eight feet up to the very top. Mm -hmm. So the best way to treat a room like this, I think, is uh, if you don't need a lot of isolation upstairs. If you do, of course, you're going to have to put uh, uh, sheetrock and pack that with fiberglass. But if you don't need the isolation upstairs, I think one of the best ways to deal with this is to pack this whole space in between here with uh, one foot thick uh, fluffy fiberglass. Do the whole thing and you can cover it with fabric. It's pretty easy to just, uh, with a friend, to uh, uh, take fabric and staple it. And you can just trim around the other, around the side. And that's what we're going to do in here. And I know you're planning on, uh, on kind of redoing the whole look here. you got right. some uh, uh, parquet floor parquet over there. put on the floor. And that's, uh, you're going to do that. Nice and, uh, dress. Going to dress up the floor nicely. And uh, also uh, put that over there in the concrete. So what we're going to... So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to put up a little bit of fiberglass and fabric just to, just to show how to do it. Uh, we're going to put some mini traps in this room. We're going to put eight. Almost every room needs eight mini traps, we found. Uh, very small rooms need more base traps than large rooms uh, proportionally uh, because they have more severe problems. The walls are closer together so the reflections are stronger because they're closer and the reflections are what cause all, cause all of the low frequency problems. Uh, so for a small room like this, eight mini traps is, is really the right number. Larger rooms also can get away with eight usually because uh, they're larger and uh, have fewer problems. Reflections are less severe. The modes are, are uh, generally going to be closer together. And uh, uh, so you don't need to cover really quite as much proportionally as a smaller room. So for a room that's maybe up to even twice the size, eight is a good amount. Uh, sometimes ten. And this room is uh, uh, about 10 feet wide by 16 feet long, and again, uh, almost 8 feet, 7.5 feet anyway, to the uh, uh, bottom of the so floor long. above. And when you're trying to figure out what the room size is, so far as low frequencies are concerned, it is to the uh, solid floor above. Uh, even if there were a drop ceiling or fabric stretched or something, 
uh, as far as for low frequency. Right. Yeah. So far as low frequencies, we're doing a mode calculation. So we're going to put uh, a mini trap in this front, in, in the uh, left front corner there. Another one in the right front. In the rear of the room, normally what we would like to do is put a mini trap across the corner, but uh, this is pretty typical also. Uh, we have doors going in, and there's a door on each side. So what we're going to do, we're going to put a mini trap on the door and another mini trap over here. And it's not quite as efficient as putting it across, but two mini traps flat on the wall are about the same effect as one mini trap cutting across well, the corner. Although they will be uh, spacer on them. And we will have it correct. That's correct. We have uh, uh, spacers that we put behind the traps, and that keeps them uh, spaced out from the wall. Uh, so that will be six mini traps in this room: two in the front and uh, four in the back. Uh, and to get eight in, eventually we're going to put some up by the ceiling. Uh, but until that's done, it's uh, easier now. For now, we're going to just literally lay them on the floor. It really doesn't matter. It's the exact same thing whether you have a mini trap just sitting on the floor resting up against the wall or whether it's up here. All corners are the same. A room is, uh, is like a three-dimensional thing floating around in space and there's no concept of up, down, left, or right. Uh, so just for the purposes of uh, doing this test and demo, we're going to uh, have eight traps that way. You're good. All right, so here we have a unique situation where we want to hang this on a door. We can't hang it just like a picture because there would be no support on the bottom. So we're actually going to hang it as a picture, but with two supports, one on the top and one on the bottom. And that'll keep it from flopping around when you're flopping around. And we'll see how that works. So here we've strung uh, the, the top uh, wire for hanging down on the door. And now we're going to string the bottom wire for the bottom connection. And I'll, uh, I'll do that Let's now. see how that works. Ethan's going to thread this through. You know, I can do this, anybody can. That's right. You get up and then you just twist it real nice, like a, almost looks like a hangman's noose. But that's right. It gives you a nice tight connection. And that's got to come out to here somewhere. So we'll just put that made there. It, as long as we got a little extra slop. Your mileage may vary, your hangers may vary. Normally when we hang these on the wall, all that's needed is one of those uh, spacers positioned. It ends up being around here to keep it straight. But because of the way we're tightening this on the top and the bottom, we're going to uh, use two spacers. Mike's so going to hang this on the door. And Just find that screw head. All right, you got to get it. Is it hanging about straight? Okay, uh, perfect. Yeah, it might not be, but we can adjust it. As we All right, fit. Let me pull that out. Put your spacer That's perfect right there. On the top. And we'll put one on the bottom. Put this right in here. Those are your three inch spacers. That we can. Uh, Where's that? There. there we go. Okay. All right. Now we tie the bottom. The bottom screw. Get it nice and tight so that it. Uh, and is that straight? Can you tell me well, it's straight. Well, uh, this for this we need our torpedo level. Oh, just look at it. How's it seem? Uh, it's got to go over to your right element. Uh, oh, that's about right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm just pulling on these wires here, and I'm just gonna. Twist this around, twist this around. Look at we'll, that. We'll cut that later and trim it. But look at that. It's a nice firm piece. Yeah, pretty firm. Look at that. All right. That's a piece. Now we're going to put the uh, mini traps in the front corners here. And uh, what you do is you put a screw 15 inches out from the corner, about an inch below where the top of the trap is going to be. So I'm kind of an empirical kind of guy here. And it looks to me like that's about where we're going to be vertically. So that's right above 
about an inch above that scratch there. So let's see what we actually have here. So let's say uh, 15 inches down and 15 inches out. It's right there. And the same thing here. We'll measure from the bottom of the stud, 15 inches out. None of this is rocket science. 15 inches down is right around here. And uh, it's very easy while you're tightening the wires to adjust it and get it to stay straight and not flop around. Uh, for this 3 quarter inch tongue and groove pine, we're just going to use a 1 inch drywall screw. It's nice and easy and it's very strong. around we'll attach the wires for this the wires don't have to be long at all all right and look at that and what's amazing is we've already noticed a change in the acoustic environment in this room it's just with these right. two or three traps yep it's made quite a big difference all right let's do the other one you need a stud let me get but, you. No, this is fine because it it really it really doesn't matter. As long as I get it within a quarter of an inch. Okay. Uh, and, and again, for corner mounting, uh, all you need are a couple of short wires because there's a, there's two screws. There's one screw that this is going to wrap around. And the one that this is going to wrap around the corner is going to be in the middle. And also, as long as we're here, I uh, might as well talk a little about this diffuser yeah. here, or reflector. Uh, there's a glass uh, window opposite here, and uh, into the uh, live room. And uh, so we didn't want to put deadening material on this side, or another mini trap, or a micro trap, because uh, we want to keep the room symmetrical. Uh, so instead, it made more sense to make a, a curved uh, surface. And that way you don't get uh, repetitive echo between the left and right walls. Ringing. Right, but without having to deaden the room by putting yet more absorption in. I think these eight mini traps will be just right. Okay, just bear with me. Alrighty. And on this side, I need... Is that the uh, light straight? Let it go completely. That's it. Okay. What's uh, beautiful about the corners is that it automatically, assuming your walls are straight, it will the trap will line up directly with each corner, That's each right. side of the wall. So no chance of not being plumb. That's not perfect, that's good enough for now. Yeah. What was that, Doug? One more time? I don't, I'm not sure I understand <coughs> the, the importance. Be, because, assuming these walls are straight, the unit automatically aligns with each of these walls into the corners. Oh, I see. You don't have to worry about leveling the thing. Cool. Okay. Right, we now have eight mini traps in this room. There's two in each back corner instead of one. We have the front corners are now trapped properly. And we're laying two more on the side, on the corner. Again, we're going to cover this whole ceiling with fiberglass and have a lot some more absorption. But a lot of people don't have fiberglass and just have a sheetrock ceiling. That's pretty typical. So by getting eight of them in here, again, they would be up on the ceiling corners probably in most rooms. Uh, but for here, and for this test, we'll just uh, lean, lean them up on their side. Now we've done the sine wave test without traps. Now we're going to do sine wave uh, test with traps. Ethan, why is the sine wave test important here? Well, the sine wave is much, much more accurate. Uh, it has much more resolution than standard pink noise uh, tests. Often what's done to, to uh, quote, tune a room is play pink noise very loud through the speakers and have uh, a measuring mic uh, at the mix position and uh, analyze that in third octave bands. The problem with third octave analysis, at least for low frequencies below, you know, two, three, four hundred hertz, is there are so many peaks and dips and so much variation uh, often within 10 or 20 cycles or hertz, there will be a the difference between a peak and a dip. When you have third octave uh, analysis, 
all of the frequencies within that band are all averaged together. So you could have within a third octave band a peak, a dip, and another peak, and it all gets averaged together to look a little bit, you know, north of uh, of a flat response. So with third octave, you could miss those peaks and dips. Oh, you even with the twelfth octave, uh, you'll you'll miss that. Uh, uh, and, and in this in this room in particular, in the test we did last year, uh, we measured a peak and its adjacent dip exactly a twelfth octave away. It's like a half step on a piano or on a guitar. Uh, so that's very very close together. So now we'll record the uh, the same uh, the same sine wave test every hertz from 40 through 300 uh, with the eight mini tracks in the room. So this is this is around 44 hertz, 45 hertz, and there was a big peak before, and that's been brought down. That's great. Quite a bit. There was a huge dip, and this is around 75 hertz, and this is right at the, right at the mix position, and this is very common in uh, in rooms this size. They have a big hole, 70, 80, 90 hertz, somewhere around there, right at the mix position, and all of that has been brought up enormously, and uh, and made much much flatter. Uh, up here in the high bass range, this uh, all of this variation has been made much more manageable. It still looks ripply. This is not like, like a frequency response curve you'd see on a preamp, but uh, the difference audibly is, is incredible and the frequency response is far, far better. Right. And one other point I should make uh, here is this is a huge difference. This is at least a 15 dB increase in volume. I don't know if you can see the legends there, but this is a huge increase in fullness. This is not just a couple of dB. This is uh, uh, at least 15 dB difference that this has come up. And the same with this, this is about a 15 dB reduction where this frequency was way too loud. This has now been tamed by at least 12 dB, uh, probably more like about 15. Uh, so that's a huge, huge difference. This is not just a small change in level. You know, another point I should make about the uh, flatness of this, and obviously this is so much flatter and smoother if you, if you look compared to the uh, before treatment. But uh, a lot of people are really upset to realize that the rooms are this bad. And, uh, and again, a lot of it is because of the size of the room. But even large rooms have uh, huge anomalies like this. And uh, I, I heard an interesting quote attributed to a famous unnamed acoustician and studio designer who says, if I can get a room, and we're talking a million dollar room, if I can get a room within plus or minus 6 dB, my job is done. And uh, so if we can get within, you know, 15 or so where it had been, 35 dB difference. If we can get that to half or less, that's a huge improvement and a very audible improvement. There's no question uh, that, uh, that the mini traps uh, make make a huge improvement and uh, and do much more than uh, any other treatment. And the final step was to put in a couple of micro traps, and these are just mounted on mic stands so they can be brought in and out. Uh, and this will help uh, eliminate reflections off the side walls from the speaker off the sidewall and into the mix position. Uh, normally there would be another one on the ceiling to avoid reflections up off the ceiling and then down to the mix position, but because the ceiling is eventually going to be fully fiberglass insulated uh, with fabric covering it, there's no need to do that uh, uh, right now. And this is it, and this is the, uh, the complete treatment for this room. Mm -hmm.